I smoothed my skirt and took a deep breath before pushing open the heavy oak door to Jake's new office. The plaque reading, Jake Hartley, President, still gleamed, barely a week old. My husband glanced up from his computer, his brow furrowed. Nora, I'm swamped. What is it? I plastered on a smile. The Henderson account files are ready for your review, and the staff meeting starts in ten minutes. Jake waved his hand dismissively. Cancel it. I've got more important things to deal with. But Jake, everyone's been preparing their presentations all week. They're expecting you to... I said cancel it. He snapped, his eyes never leaving the screen. That's an order, not a request. I bit my tongue, nodding curtly before retreating. As I closed the door, I caught a glimpse of Jake's reflection in the window. He was already engrossed in his work again, oblivious to the sting of his words. In the hallway, I leaned against the wall, willing my racing heart to slow. This wasn't the Jake I'd married. The man I loved had been passionate about architecture, dedicated to his team. Now it seemed the fancy title had gone straight to his head. Everything okay, Nora? I looked up to see Kenneth, Jake's father, watching me with concern. Even in retirement, he still came by the office regularly. I straightened, forcing a smile. Of course, just a busy morning. How are you, Kenneth? He studied me for a moment. I'm fine, but you don't look it. What's my son done now? I hesitated, torn between loyalty and frustration. It's nothing, really. Jake's just... adjusting to his new role. Kenneth's eyes narrowed. Adjusting or letting it go to his head. Before I could respond, Jake's voice boomed from his office. Nora, where are those files? I grabbed the folder from my desk, shooting Kenneth an apologetic look. Duty calls. As I re-entered Jake's office, he barely glanced up. Finally, leave them there and close the door on your way out. Jake, I said, stealing myself. The team really needs you at this meeting. They've worked hard on... He slammed his hand on the desk. For God's sake, Nora. I'm the president now. I decide what's important, not you or anyone else. Got it? I flinched, shocked by his outburst. I'm just trying to help, Jake. This company means everything to your father, and I promised him I'd... My father isn't in charge anymore, Jake interrupted, his voice cold. I am, and if you can't handle that, maybe you shouldn't be here either. The words hit me like a slap. I stared at him, searching for any trace of the man I'd fallen in love with, but all I saw was a stranger, drunk on power and ego. Fine, I said quietly. I'll cancel the meeting. As I turned to leave, Jake's phone buzzed. He answered it, his tone instantly shifting to smooth charm. Bella, darling, yes, I can't wait for our business lunch. See you soon. My hand froze on the doorknob. Bella? The name was unfamiliar, but the way Jake said it sent a chill down my spine. I glanced back, catching a glimpse of a sly smile on his face before he noticed me watching. What? He snapped. Don't you have work to do? I nodded mutely and fled the office, my mind reeling. Outside, the disappointed faces of our team greeted me as I announced the canceled meeting, but their frustration paled in comparison to the dread building in my stomach. Who was Bella? And what kind of business lunch made my husband smile like that? As I sank into my chair, I realized with growing certainty that my marriage and this company were about to face a storm that none of us were prepared for. The next morning, I arrived at the office early, determined to salvage what I could of yesterday's disaster. As I walked through the bullpen, the tension was palpable. Whispers ceased as I passed, replaced by forced smiles and awkward nods. Morning, Nora, Sarah, our lead designer, called out. Any word on rescheduling the meeting? I hesitated, torn between honesty and diplomacy. I'm working on it, Sarah. Jake's adjusting to his new role. Sarah's eyebrows shot up. Adjusting? Is that what we're calling it now? Before I could respond, Jake's booming voice echoed through the office. Nora, my office now! I hurried to Jake's door, bracing myself. He was pacing, agitation radiating off him in waves. What the hell is this? He thrust a stack of papers at me. I scanned the top sheet, my heart sinking. It was a formal complaint from the design team, citing Jake's absence from crucial meetings and delays in project approvals. Jake, they're just frustrated. If we could set up a meeting to address their concerns. Their concerns, he scoffed. I'm running a business here, not a daycare. If they can't handle the pressure, they can leave. But Jake, these are your father's most trusted employees. They've been with the company for years. His eyes flashed dangerously. My father isn't in charge anymore. I am, 
and I won't have my authority questioned by a bunch of whiny designers. I took a deep breath, steeling myself. Jake, please, this isn't like you. What's really going on? For a moment, I saw a flicker of the old Jake, vulnerable, uncertain, but it vanished as quickly as it appeared. Nothing's going on, he snapped. Just do your job and keep them in line. That's what I'm paying you for, isn't it? The words stung more than he knew. I wasn't just an employee. I was his wife, his partner, or at least I thought I was. As I turned to leave, Jake's phone buzzed. He glanced at it, a sly smile spreading across his face. I'm heading out for lunch. Hold my calls. But Jake, we have the client meeting at one. Reschedule it, he said, already halfway out the door. I watched him go, a knot forming in my stomach. This wasn't just about work anymore. Something was very, very wrong. Back at my desk, I buried myself in damage control, placating angry clients, smoothing ruffled feathers among the staff. By mid-afternoon, I was exhausted and on edge. A gentle knock on my cubicle startled me. I looked up to see Kenneth, concern etched on his face. Nora, dear, got a minute? I nodded, grateful for the interruption. Kenneth settled into the chair across from me, his eyes kind but searching. I've been hearing things, he said softly, about Jake, about how he's running the company. I swallowed hard, unsure how to respond. Kenneth had entrusted his life's work to his son. How could I tell him it was all falling apart? Kenneth, I... He held up a hand, silencing me. You don't have to protect him, Nora. Not from me. I've known something was off for a while now. I just... I hoped he'd grow into the role. Tears pricked at my eyes. I don't know what to do, I whispered. He won't listen to me. He's pushing everyone away. Kenneth reached across the desk, squeezing my hand. We'll figure this out, Nora. Together. This company. This family. It means everything to me. I won't let Jake destroy it. Just then, Jake's voice boomed through the office once more. Where the hell is everyone? Don't we have work to do? Kenneth and I exchanged a look. The storm was far from over. As I stood to face whatever crisis Jake had conjured up now, Kenneth's words echoed in my mind. Together. For the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. But as I rounded the corner and saw Jake standing there, his tie askew and a hint of lipstick on his collar, that hope flickered and died. The man I loved was slipping away, and I was powerless to stop it. I trudged up the driveway, exhausted from another day of damage control at the office. All I wanted was a hot bath and a glass of wine. But as I reached for my keys, the front door swung open. A stunning blonde stepped out, her lipstick slightly smudged, and her blouse hastily buttoned. She froze when she saw me, her eyes widening in recognition. Oh, you must be Nora, she purred, recovering quickly. I'm Bella, Jake's consultant. My world tilted on its axis. Bella, the name from Jake's phone call, the lipstick on his collar, it all clicked into place with sickening clarity. Consultant? I managed, my voice barely above a whisper. Bella's lips curved into a predatory smile. Oh yes, Jake and I have been working very closely together. He's quite the visionary, you know. Before I could respond, Jake appeared in the doorway, his face pale. Nora, you're home early. I stared at him, searching for any trace of guilt or remorse, but all I saw was panic and calculation. Bella was just leaving, he said quickly, ushering her towards her car. They exchanged a loaded glance before she drove away, leaving me alone with my husband, a man I suddenly felt I didn't know at all. I brushed past Jake into the house, my mind reeling. He followed, his excuses already flowing. Nora, it's not what you think. Bella's just helping with some new projects. We were brainstorming ideas for... I whirled to face him. Don't. Don't you dare lie to me, Jake. Not now. He faltered, the facade cracking. I... I didn't mean for this to happen. It just... did. It just happened? I echoed, my voice rising. Like you just happened to neglect your responsibilities at work? Like you just happened to treat your employees, our friends, like dirt? Jake's expression hardened. You don't understand the pressure I'm under. Dad left me with impossible shoes to fill. I'm doing the best I can. By having an affair? By running the company into the ground? I'm not. He stopped, frustration etched on his face. Look, things got complicated, but I can fix this. We can fix this. I laughed bitterly. We? There is no we anymore, Jake. You made sure of that. As the words left my mouth, I realized their truth. Whatever we had, our marriage, our partnership, it was gone. Shattered by Jake's betrayal and my own blind loyalty, Jake's phone buzzed. 
He glanced at it, his expression conflicted. It's Bella, isn't it? I said quietly. He didn't deny it. Nora, please, let me explain. But I was done listening, done making excuses for him. I grabbed my keys and headed for the door. Where are you going? Jake called after me. Away from you, I shot back. I need to think. As I drove through the darkening streets, tears blurred my vision. How had we come to this? The man I loved, the life we'd built, it was all crumbling around me. My phone rang. Kenneth's name flashed on the screen. I hesitated, then answered. Nora? Are you all right? You left the office in such a hurry? His concern broke something inside me. The dam burst, and I found myself pouring out everything. Jake's affair, the state of the company, my own shattered heart. Kenneth listened in silence. When I finished, he spoke softly. Oh, Nora, I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I never should have put so much pressure on Jake. It's not your fault, I insisted. Jake made his choices. Perhaps, Kenneth sighed, but now we need to make ours. Come to my house, we'll figure this out together. As I turned towards Kenneth's neighborhood, a strange calm settled over me. The worst had happened. Jake's betrayal was out in the open. But I wasn't alone. And for the first time in months, I felt a flicker of strength returning. Whatever came next, I would face it head on. No more excuses. No more blind loyalty. It was time to fight for myself and for the company that had become my second home. I stepped into the office, my head held high despite the whispers and sidelong glances. After my conversation with Kenneth last night, I was determined to face whatever came my way. But nothing could have prepared me for what I saw when I rounded the corner. There, in the middle of the bullpen, stood Jake with his arm around Bella's waist. She was dressed in a pencil skirt and blouse that wouldn't have looked out of place on me just a few months ago. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Bella. Rat Jake announced, his voice carrying across the stunned silence. She'll be joining our team as a special consultant. My heart pounded in my ears as I locked eyes with Jake. His gaze was challenging, daring me to make a scene. Bella smirked, clearly relishing her new position in the company and in my husband's arms. Sarah, our lead designer, spoke up first. But Mr. Hartley, we already have a full team. And Nora. Nora will be assisting Bella in getting up to speed, Jake interrupted smoothly. Won't you, dear? All eyes turned to me. I could feel the mix of pity and curiosity radiating from my colleagues. Taking a deep breath, I plastered on a smile that felt more like a grimace. Of course, I managed. Welcome aboard, Bella. The next few hours were a blur of forced pleasantries and thinly veiled tension. I retreated to my office, trying to focus on work, but my mind kept replaying Jake's betrayal over and over. A knock on my door startled me from my thoughts. It was Kenneth, his face etched with concern. Nora, I just heard. Are you all right? I shook my head, fighting back tears. I don't know how much more of this I can take, Kenneth. It's like Jake's determined to hurt me in every way possible. Kenneth's expression hardened. This ends now. I'm calling an emergency board meeting. Jake's gone too far. Before I could respond, Jake burst into the office, his face flushed with anger. What the hell do you think you're doing, Dad? He snarled. This is my company now. You can't just waltz in and... Enough! Kenneth's voice boomed, silencing Jake. You've made a mockery of everything I built. It's time you face the consequences. Jake's eyes narrowed. Consequences? I'm just getting started. In fact, he reached into his jacket and pulled out an envelope, tossing it onto my desk. Consider this my first official act as president. With trembling hands, I opened the envelope. Inside were divorce papers, already signed by Jake. You're firing me? I whispered, disbelief and hurt washing over me. Jake's laugh was cold. Firing you? Oh no, Nora. I'm setting you free. From this job, from this marriage, from everything. I stared at the papers, my world crumbling around me, all those years, all our dreams, reduced to a few sheets of legal jargon. Jake, please, Kenneth pleaded. Think about what you're doing. Nora's been the backbone of this company. Without her. Without her, we'll finally move forward, Jake snapped. Face it, Dad. Your way of doing things is outdated. Bella and I have big plans for the future. As they argued, a strange calm settled over me. I looked at the divorce papers, then at Jake, this stranger wearing my husband's face, in that moment, I made a decision. I'll sign, I said quietly, cutting through their heated exchange. Both men turned to me, shocked. Jake recovered first, a triumphant smirk spreading across his face. I knew you'd see reason, Nora. 
It's for the best, really. I met his gaze steadily. You're right, Jake. It is for the best, but not for the reasons you think. With a steady hand, I signed the papers. As I did, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. Jake might have thrown away our marriage, but I was done being a victim. I quit, I announced, standing up. Effective immediately, Jake's smirk faltered. What? You, you can't just... I can, and I am, I interrupted. Good luck running this company without me, Jake. You're going to need it. As I walked out of the office, head held high, I heard Kenneth's voice behind me. Nora, wait. I paused, turning back. Kenneth's eyes were filled with a mixture of pride and determination. I have a proposition for you, he said. One that might just save this company and give you the fresh start you deserve. For the first time in months, I felt a spark of hope. Whatever came next, I was ready to face it, on my own terms. I sat across from Kenneth in his cozy home office, my hands wrapped around a steaming mug of tea. The events of the past few days swirled in my mind like a tempest. Nora, Kenneth began, his voice gentle but firm, I want you to come work for my non-profit architectural trust. We need someone with your skills and integrity. I blinked, surprised. But Kenneth, what about the company? Jake! Jake made his choice, Kenneth interrupted, a hint of sadness in his eyes. Now it's time for you to make yours. As I considered his offer, my phone buzzed. A text from Sarah. SOS. Everything's falling apart here. Jake and Bella are running the place into the ground. We need you, Nora. My heart clenched. Despite everything, I still cared about the company and the people I'd worked with for years. I, I need some time to think, I told Kenneth. He nodded, understanding. Of course, but don't take too long. We both know Jake won't waste any time destroying what we've built. The next morning, I steeled myself and walked into the office one last time to clear out my desk. The atmosphere was tense, with whispered conversations stopping abruptly as I passed. As I packed my things, Sarah appeared at my door, her face drawn with worry. Nora, thank God you're here. It's a disaster. Jake's canceled three major projects, and Bella's been reassigning teams without any regard for their expertise. Clients are furious, and— I don't work here anymore, Sarah, I cut in, my voice tight. There's nothing I can do. Sarah's eyes widened. You're leaving, but— But what about us? What about the company? Before I could respond— Jake's voice boomed from the hallway. Nora, what are you doing here? He stormed into my office, Bella trailing behind him like a smug shadow. I'm just collecting my things, I said calmly, refusing to be intimidated. Jake's eyes narrowed. Good. The sooner you're gone, the better. Bella's more than capable of handling your responsibilities. I couldn't help but laugh. Is she? Is that why clients are threatening to pull out? Why the staff is in chaos? Bella stepped forward, her perfectly manicured nails digging into Jake's arm. I'll have you know I'm doing an excellent job. Jake thinks I'm a natural. I'm sure he does, I replied coolly. But running a successful architectural firm takes more than just being... natural. Jake's face flushed with anger. That's enough. Get out, Nora. You're no longer welcome here. As I picked up my box of belongings, a commotion erupted in the hallway. Kenneth strode in, flanked by two members of the board. What's going on here? Jake demanded. Kenneth's voice was steel. Emergency board meeting, son. Your recent decisions have put this company at risk, and we're here to discuss your future as president. Jake paled, his bravado crumbling. You can't do this. I'm in charge now. We'll see about that, one of the board members said grimly. As the group moved towards the conference room, Kenneth caught my eye. Nora, we could use your insight in this meeting, if you're willing. I hesitated, torn between my desire to wash my hands of this mess and my loyalty to the company I'd helped build. Jake sneered. She doesn't work here anymore, Dad. She has no say. Something in me snapped. I set down my box and straightened my shoulders. Actually, I think I will stay for this meeting. After all, I seem to be the only one who knows how this company really runs. Bella gasped. Jake sputtered, but Kenneth smiled proudly. As we filed into the conference room, I felt a surge of determination. This wasn't just about me anymore. It was about protecting the legacy Kenneth had built and the livelihoods of everyone who worked here. Whatever happened next, I was ready to fight. Not for Jake, not for our failed marriage, but for the company and people I believed in. It was time to show everyone, especially Jake, exactly what I was capable of.
The boardroom crackled with tension as I laid out the stark reality of the company's situation. Spreadsheets and reports covered the table, each one a damning indictment of Jake's leadership. In the past month alone, we've lost three major clients, I explained, my voice steady despite the hammering of my heart. Our reputation in the industry is in freefall, and staff morale is at an all-time low. Jake's face was a mask of fury and disbelief. This is ridiculous. We're doing fine. Bella and I have been working on new strategies that will... That will what, Jake? Kenneth interrupted, his voice sharp. Drive us further into the ground? The numbers don't lie. I watched as the board members exchanged worried glances. This was it, the moment that would determine the fate of the company we'd all worked so hard to build. Bella, who had insisted on attending, piped up. But Jake's been working so hard. He's been at the office late every night, coming up with innovative ideas. I couldn't help but scoff. Is that what you call it? Because from where I'm standing... All I see is a company in crisis and a president more concerned with his personal life than his professional responsibilities. Jake's eyes flashed dangerously. You don't know what you're talking about, Nora. You're just bitter because I moved on. Moved on? I laughed. Credulously. You destroyed our marriage and now you're destroying this company. That's not moving on, Jake. That's burning everything to the ground. The oldest board member, Mr. Hawkins, cleared his throat. I think we've heard enough. It's clear that drastic action needs to be taken to save this company. Jake paled. What are you saying? I'm saying, Mr. Hawkins continued, that we need to consider new leadership, effective immediately. The room erupted into chaos. Jake shouted accusations, Bella cried, and the board members argued amongst themselves. Through it all, I sat silently, a strange calm settling over me. Suddenly, Jake turned to me, his eyes wild. Nora, please, you have to help me. Tell them I can fix this. Tell them we can work together again, like before. I stared at him, this man who had once been my partner in every sense of the word. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the Jake I used to know, scared, vulnerable, pleading for help. But then, Bella's hand snaked possessively around his arm, and reality came crashing back. I'm sorry, Jake, I said softly, but you made your choice. Now you have to live with the consequences. Kenneth stood, his voice cutting through the din. I move that we vote on Jake's continued leadership of this company. All in favor of removing Jake from his position as president? Raise your hand. Time seemed to slow as hands began to rise. One, two, three, a clear majority. Jake's face crumpled as the reality of what was happening sank in. This isn't fair, Bella shrieked. You can't do this to us. But it was done. Jake was out, and the company I loved was hanging by a thread. As the meeting adjourned, Kenneth pulled me aside. Nora, we need you. The company needs you. Will you come back and help us rebuild? I hesitated, torn between my desire to help and my need for a fresh start. Before I could answer, Jake approached, his eyes red-rimmed and desperate. Nora, please, he begged. Don't let them do this. You know me better than anyone. You know I can make this right if you just give me another chance. I looked from Jake to Kenneth feeling the weight of their expectations pressing down on me. The future of the company and my own future hung in the balance. In that moment, I realized that this wasn't just about saving a business. It was about standing up for myself, for my worth, for everything I'd worked so hard to achieve. Taking a deep breath, I made my decision. Whatever came next, I knew it would change everything. I stood at the podium, facing a sea of expectant faces, the company-wide meeting had been called to address the recent upheaval, and as the newly appointed interim CEO, it fell to me to chart our course forward. As many of you know, I began, my voice steady despite my racing heart, the past few weeks have been tumultuous for our company, but today marks a new beginning. From the corner of my eye, I saw Jake slip into the back of the room, his face haggard. Bella was nowhere to be seen. We've lost clients, yes, we've faced setbacks, but the heart of this company, the talent, dedication, and vision that each of you brings to your work, that remains unchanged. A murmur of approval rippled through the crowd. I pressed on, outlining our plan to rebuild client trust and stabilize our finances. As I spoke, I could see hope rekindling in the eyes of my colleagues. Suddenly, Jake's voice cut through the air. This is all lies. Heads whipped around as he stormed down the aisle. Nora's trying to steal my company. She orchestrated this whole thing to push me out. 
Gasps and whispers filled the room. I gripped the podium, willing myself to stay calm. Jake, this isn't the time or place. It's exactly the time, he shouted, his face flushed with anger. You turned my own father against me. You manipulated the board. You? That's enough. Kenneth's voice boomed from the side of the stage. He strode forward, placing a supportive hand on my shoulder. Jake, you did this to yourself. Your actions, your decisions, they're what brought us to this point. Jake's eyes darted wildly between Kenneth and me. Dad, please, you can't let her do this. It's our family legacy. Kenneth's expression softened slightly. Son, the legacy isn't just about the name on the building. It's about integrity, hard work, and doing right by our employees and clients. Nora understands that. It's time you did, too. A tense silence fell over the room. I could feel everyone's eyes on us, waiting to see how this family drama would play out. Jake's shoulders sagged, the fight seeming to drain out of him. So that's it? I'm just... out? I stepped away from the podium, approaching Jake cautiously. It doesn't have to be the end, Jake. There's still a place for you here if you're willing to earn it back. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I'd once loved, vulnerable, uncertain. But then his expression hardened. I don't need your pity, Nora, or yours, Dad. I'll start my own firm. You'll see. I'll build something even bigger, even better. With that, he turned on his heel and stormed out, leaving a stunned silence in his wake. I returned to the podium, acutely aware of the hundreds of eyes upon me. This was the moment that would define not just my leadership, but the future of the company. I know that was... Difficult to witness, I began, my voice slightly shaky. But it's a perfect example of why we're here today. This company isn't about one person's ego or ambition. It's about all of us, working together to create something extraordinary. I paused, looking out at the faces of my colleagues, some skeptical, some hopeful, all waiting for direction. I can't promise it will be easy. We have a long road ahead of us. But I can promise you this. Every decision I make will be in the best interest of this company and the people who make it great. That's you, all of you. As I continued outlining our path forward, I felt a weight lifting from my shoulders. The worst was over. Jake was gone, his last-ditch effort to undermine me had failed, and I finally had the chance to lead on my own terms. But as I caught Kenneth's eye, I saw a flicker of worry there and I realized that while one chapter of this saga might be closing, another was just beginning. The real test of my leadership and our company's resilience was still to come. Six months had passed since that fateful company meeting, and I stood at the window of my new office, gazing out at the city skyline. The view was different now, not just because I was in Kenneth's nonprofit trust building, but because I saw the world through new eyes. A knock at the door pulled me from my reverie. Come in, I called. Sarah entered, her face beaming. Nora, you won't believe this. The Henderson Project? We got it! I couldn't help but grin. The Henderson Project was exactly the kind of socially responsible, innovative design work I'd always dreamed of doing. That's fantastic, Sarah. The team must be thrilled. They are, she nodded. And there's something else you should know. I raised an eyebrow, waiting. Sarah took a deep breath. Jake's company... It's officially bankrupt. They filed for Chapter 11 this morning. The news hit me like a physical blow. Despite everything, a part of me had hoped Jake would find his way. And Jake? I asked quietly. No one's seen him in days, but Bella. Sarah hesitated. She showed up here earlier, looking for a job. Said Jake left her high and dry. I sank into my chair, processing this information. The Jake I'd known, the man I'd loved and built a life with, was truly gone. In his place was a cautionary tale, a reminder of how quickly success could turn to ashes when built on the wrong foundation. As if summoned by my thoughts, Kenneth appeared in the doorway. I heard the news, he said softly. How are you holding up? I managed a small smile. I'm okay, it's just... a lot to take in. Kenneth nodded, his eyes filled with a mixture of sadness and pride. You've done remarkable things here, Nora. This new wing of the trust, the projects you're taking on... You're changing lives. We're changing lives, I corrected him. I couldn't have done any of this without your support. He waved away my gratitude. You did this, Nora. You took a terrible situation and turned it into something beautiful. That's a rare gift. As Kenneth and Sarah left, I found myself alone with my thoughts once more. 
I thought about Jake, about the life we'd shared and the dreams we'd had. I thought about Bella and how her pursuit of status and wealth had left her with nothing. But mostly, I thought about myself. The woman I'd been when this all started, desperate to please, afraid to stand up for herself, seemed like a stranger now. My phone buzzed, startling me. A text from an unknown number. It's Jake. Can we talk? My heart raced as I stared at the screen. Six months ago, I would have jumped at the chance. Now, I took a deep breath and typed my response. I'm sorry, Jake, but I've moved on. I hope you find peace. As I hit send, I felt the last threads of my old life fall away. The future stretched out before me, full of possibility and promise. A knock at my door pulled me from my thoughts. It was my team, eager to start brainstorming for the Henderson Project. Come on in, I said, smiling. Let's create something amazing. As we gathered around the conference table, ideas flowing freely, I felt a surge of gratitude. This was where I belonged, not defined by my relationship to Jake or anyone else, but standing on my own two feet, surrounded by people who respected and valued me for who I was. The journey had been painful, but it had led me here, to a place of strength, purpose, and self-discovery. And as I looked around at the bright, eager faces of my team, I knew that the best was yet to come. All right, I said, picking up a marker. Let's reimagine the future, together. And as we began to sketch out our vision, I realized that this, this moment, this work, this life I'd built from the ashes of my old one, this was my true happily ever after. Not a fairy tale ending, but something far more valuable. A new beginning, crafted by my own hands and heart. The road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but I was ready for whatever challenges it might bring. Because now I knew the truth. My worth wasn't determined by anyone else's actions or opinions. It came from within, from the strength and resilience I'd discovered in myself. And that, I realized, was the greatest victory of all. Hank, honey, are you in the bathroom? My voice echoed through the silent house as I dropped my suitcase by the door. What are you talking about, Sarah? I'm at the office. Hank's voice crackled through the phone. A shiver ran down my spine as the sound of running water and soft humming drifted from the upstairs bathroom. My heart pounded louder with each step I took towards the stairs. There's someone in our house, Hank, I whispered, but the line had gone silent. I bit back a wave of panic. With each creak of the stairs, my breath quickened. I reached the bathroom door and hesitated, my hand trembling as it grabbed the knob. I decided against it. Instead, I stepped quietly away and dialed Hank again. The sound still carried from the bathroom, deep and serene, like someone leisurely enjoying their time. My mind raced, grappling with a thousand questions. Who could it be, and why here? I managed to slip downstairs without making any more noise, my legs feeling weak. I grabbed my purse and keys, glancing back once more toward the stairs. I hesitated, torn between leaving and confronting whatever was happening in my home. Finally, the fear won, and I bolted out the door, locking it behind me with trembling hands. Once in the car, I sat behind the wheel, my heart pounding. What if someone dangerous was inside? But the voice sounded calm, almost familiar, but not Hank's. I dialed Dana's number, fingers fumbling on the touchscreen. Hey, Sarah, what's up? Dana's voice brought an immediate sense of relief. Dana, I need to come over. Something is really wrong. Sure, come on over. What happened? Just, I'll explain when I get there. I pulled out of the driveway, my hands gripping the steering wheel so hard my knuckles turned white. The drive to Dana's felt like a blur, my mind looping back to that humming, the water running. None of it made any sense. As soon as Dana opened the door, the floodgates broke. I told her everything, from returning a day early to finding someone in the house. Are you sure it wasn't Hank? Dana finally asked, a mixture of concern and confusion on her face. He said he was at work. Why would he lie about that? And the voice. It wasn't his, I'm certain. That's crazy, Sarah. What are you going to do? I'm not sure, I admitted, feeling the uncertainty gnaw at me as I sank into Dana's couch. But I need to know what's going on. Dana placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. You're not alone in this. We'll figure it out together. As that unsettling evening wore on, we brainstormed and speculated, yet no clear answers emerged. And in the silence... The echoes of that strange, serene humming haunted me, raising questions of trust and betrayal I never thought I'd need to face. Despite Dana's comforting presence, my mind kept returning to one thought. Who
who the hell was in my bathroom and why. The next morning, I tried to bury my anxiety under a mountain of work. However, the memory of the previous night's events kept intruding. My nerves were on edge. At the office, I kept glancing at my phone, hoping for some sign that everything was normal. Hank, could you pick up some groceries on your way home? I texted him during lunch, hoping for a casual confirmation. Sure, no problem, he replied almost immediately. His response felt off, too easy, too perfect. I couldn't help but question everything now. Back at home, Hank was already unloading groceries when I arrived. Hey, got your message. What happened yesterday? You seemed pretty freaked out. I forced a smile. Just a bad day at work, you know, stress and all. Don't let it get to you, he said, patting my shoulder. We'll have dinner and relax tonight. I nodded, but my mind was racing. As the evening went on, I started noticing the little things, traces of another presence. My face cream, always precisely where I left it, seemed slightly moved. My toothbrush was damp, even though I hadn't used it yet. Hank, why does my face cream look like someone else has been using it? I asked, trying to sound casual. You're just imagining things, Sarah. You're stressed, he replied dismissively. Doubt crept further into my thoughts. I decided to take a closer look at his behavior. Over the next few days, subtle changes in the house became more apparent. Clothes folded differently, an extra wine glass in the dishwasher. Could I really be imagining it all? Hank, what are you doing tomorrow while I'm at work? I asked, trying to keep my voice light. Just working on a project. Nothing major. He replied, not even looking up from his laptop. Anyone coming over? I inquired, hoping to catch something in his response. Just some friends, you know. Brainstorming, he said, his tone casual but evasive. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. So I did what any rational person wouldn't. I started keeping track. I began jotting down every odd detail, every little thing that seemed out of place. My notepad quickly filled up with dates, times, and observations. I was gathering evidence for reasons I didn't want to fully admit yet. Through it all, Hank remained oblivious, or maybe he just didn't care. His dismissive attitude only fueled my determination. He would realize soon enough that I wasn't just being paranoid. Each day the tension grew. No longer could I ignore the signs. I was working towards the truth, one unexplained glass, one moved object at a time. I felt a strange mix of dread and resolve. The real test came when I decided to confront him directly about our relationship without revealing my suspicions. One evening, as we both sat down for dinner, I looked him straight in the eye. Hank, do you think everything's all right with us? His reaction was immediate, a flash of surprise, quickly masked by his usual cool demeanor. Of course, Sarah. Why wouldn't it be? I nodded, keeping my thoughts to myself. It was clear now. This wasn't just about minor house discrepancies. This was a betrayal that went beyond my imagination, and I was determined to uncover the whole truth. I sat across from Dana at our favorite cafe, stirring my coffee absently. You don't look good, Sarah. What's going on? Dana's concern was palpable. Hank, I think, no, I know something is seriously wrong. Things keep changing around the house. He's acting weird. Dana leaned in, eyebrows knit together. Like what? Little stuff. My face cream being used has extra wine glasses in the dishwasher, my toothbrush wet when I haven't used it. Dana sighed. Sarah, you need to be sure. Have you asked him directly? Maybe he has friends over and isn't telling me, but it feels off. Dana nodded, considering. Keep your eyes open. You know Hank. If it's something bad, it'll show. Back at home, I ramped up my vigilance. A sort of grim determination settled over me. I started keeping a detailed log, writing down every little thing that seemed off. Closets left ajar, furniture slightly shifted, my makeup drawer rearranged. Each discovery added fuel to the fire in my belly. Hank, have you been having anyone over while I'm away? I asked one evening, my voice steady. Just some friends. You're being paranoid, Sarah. Stop stressing out over nothing. His dismissive words, paired with a patronizing tone, made my blood boil. Friends, huh, and they use my things? I shot back, unable to mask my skepticism. Sarah, get a grip. You're making something out of nothing. It's just stuff getting misplaced. Maybe you're losing it. I clenched my jaw and nodded, filing away another piece of his deceit in my mental ledger. Later, I found my favorite bracelet missing from its usual spot. It had been my grandmother's, and I never misplaced it. My heart sank. This wasn't just carelessness or imagination. 
Hank was lying. Talking to Dana helped cement my resolve. Keep a close eye on him, Sarah. Whatever's going on, you need real proof before you confront him. Over the next few days, more signs surfaced. Hank's sudden phone calls, always urgent and ending quickly when I walked into the room. His laptop, which he usually left open, now snapped shut each time I approached. I started going through his stuff when he wasn't home. It felt wrong, invasive, but necessary. One of his jackets turned up with a faint trace of perfume that wasn't mine. Heavier evidence. Marks of betrayal. Still, whenever I pressed him, Hank was swift to deflect. You're imagining things, he repeated, brushing aside my concerns with maddening ease. It only hardened my resolve. He had to be hiding something, or someone. I painstakingly documented every suspicious detail, every snatch of conversation, until the collected weight of it was undeniable. I wasn't losing my mind. Hank was losing my trust. By the time the next business trip rolled around, I had one last resort. Dana, I'm setting up cameras. I need to know. Dana's voice was firm. Do it. No more guesswork. You deserve the truth. With that decision, my focus shifted from uncertainty to action. My house was no longer a home. It was a crime scene waiting to reveal Hank's betrayal. And when it did, I'd be ready. Setting up the hidden cameras felt strangely empowering. Dana was there helping me place them discreetly around the house. Each camera angle covered key areas, the living room, the kitchen, the hallway, and most importantly, our bedroom. This is going to show the truth, Sarah, handing me a camera. No more guessing. I nodded. I just need to know. The next business trip loomed closer. I packed my bags with deliberate calm, all the while feeling a coil of tension tighten within me. Before leaving, I casually mentioned it to Hank, masking my true intent. Leaving a day early, but back as usual. Shouldn't be a problem, right? Of course not, Hank said, barely looking up from his laptop. Have a good trip. Thanks, I replied, the word tasting bitter. From the hotel, I monitored the feeds obsessively. The first few days were uneventful, with Hank going about his usual routine. But then, on the fourth day, movement caught my eye. Hank entered the house, followed by a woman. My pulse quickened, anger and betrayal swelling within me. Dana was right. The guessing was over. Hank, you bastard, I muttered to myself, watching them closely. The woman, Liz, sauntered around the house like she belonged there. They laughed, cooked together, and I felt my stomach churn disappeared into our bedroom. It was all so casual, their intimacy a blatant mockery of my trust. I called Dana. If this is what I think it is, I'm going to need your help. All of it. From beginning to end. We'll make sure they regret crossing you. Just say the word, Dana assured me. I hung up, fingers trembling. I watched the live feed as Hank and Liz lounged in my space, sharing kisses and whispered conversations. The anger seethed through me, but a fierce, cold determination took over. I spent the next hours capturing every moment on video, meticulously logging each betrayal. There was no denying it now. Hank's betrayal was real, and Liz was complicit. Hank's going to pay, I whispered to myself, closing the laptop. They both will. Two days later, I returned home earlier than planned. Dana by my side. We parked down the street, out of sight. My heart pounded as I watched the live feed from my phone, confirming their presence inside. Are you ready? Dana asked, eyes steely with resolve. Yes, this ends today. We moved quietly, inching closer to the front door. I took a deep breath and turned the handle, stepping into the entryway with deliberate calm. The muted sounds of laughter floated from upstairs, fueling my resolve. Dana and I crept up the stairs, each step a crescendo of their impending reckoning. Outside the bedroom door, I took a final breath and nodded to Dana. With a swift, decisive movement, I threw the door open. Hank! I shouted, voice cracking with the force of my rage. What the hell is going on here? Hank and Liz scrambled, sheets flying in a chaotic mess. The look on Hank's face twisted from shock to panic to an almost predictable guilt, while Liz tried to cover herself. My hands were steady as I pointed at them, phone recording every second. How long has this been going on? While I'm out working to build our future, you're here doing this? Hank stammered, trying to find words, but they caught in his throat. Liz looked terrified, realizing the gravity of the situation. The room fell into a tense, charged silence. The evidence was undeniable. The lies were exposed. There would be no more hiding, no more deceit. It was time for them both to face the consequences.
Seeing Hank stutter and scramble for words filled me with a bitter satisfaction. I stood my ground, phone still recording, capturing every detail of his disgrace. Dana stood beside me, her presence a silent support. She crossed her arms, glaring at Hank and Liz. Well, this is cozy. Hank's face turned ashen. Sarah, this isn't what it looks like, I scoffed. Don't insult me, Hank, it's exactly what it looks like. Liz, clutching the sheets to her chest, finally found her voice, but it wavered. Sarah, I... Save it, Liz. I cut her off, cold steel in my voice. You made your choices. I turned to Dana, whose eyes burned with the same fire I felt. Can you go through his electronics? Let's make sure there's no evidence left to destroy. Dana nodded, moving swiftly to Hank's desk where his laptop and phone lay. Her efficiency only highlighted Hank's pathetic attempts at explaining himself. Sarah... Please listen, it wasn't supposed to happen this way. What, getting caught? I spat back. Don't worry, I've been documenting everything, and it looks like today's show just completed my collection. Hank's eyes widened with realization. You've been spying on me? Funny how I'm the bad guy now, isn't it? I retorted. Dana tapped away on Hank's laptop, pausing occasionally to photograph messages and emails. Yep, everything's here. This wasn't a one-time thing, Sarah. Thank you, Dana, I said turning back to Hank and Liz. This ends now. I took a step forward, pointing at Liz. Get out of my house. Now. Liz scrambled off the bed, gathering her clothes. She glanced at Hank, but he avoided her gaze, too ashamed to meet her eyes. I... I didn't mean for this to happen, she muttered, more to herself than anyone else. That makes two of us, I snapped, watching her fumble with her belongings. As she hurried out, Hank moved towards me, desperation in his eyes. Sarah, please, we can talk this out. Talk? You think talking's going to fix this? While I was out there working hard for our future, you were here, destroying it. Hank's shoulders slumped. I know I messed up. Messed up doesn't begin to cover it, I said, my voice rising. It's over, Hank. I've got all the proof I need. You're not just losing me, you're losing everything. Dana walked over, handing me Hank's phone. Here, take a look. It's worse than we thought. I scanned through the messages my anger growing with each vile exchange. You and Liz thought you could just play house while I was gone? Well, playtime's over. Hank's attempts at damage control were pitiful. Sarah, I'm sorry. Sorry's not good enough. You'll hear from my lawyer, I said, turning my back to him. Don't bother trying to contact me. We're done. Leaving the bedroom, I felt an odd mix of rage and relief. As Dana and I walked out of the house, the weight of betrayal lifted, replaced by a fierce determination for justice. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I knew one thing for sure. Hank and Liz wouldn't escape the consequences of their actions. I replayed the moment in my head as Dana and I sat in her car outside my house. The image of Hank stammering, Liz scrambling, and their guilt was seared into my memory. My phone buzzed with notifications. Dana looked at me, concern etched on her face. You okay? She asked softly. I will be. I replied, stealing myself for the next steps. It's time for the confrontation. We drove to my parents' house where I'd planned how to reveal Hank's betrayal. My father, Timothy, greeted us at the door. His face hardened when he saw the expression on mine. Sarah, what happened? He asked. Let's go inside. I have something to show you all, I said, my voice steady. Inside, I connected my phone to the TV and began playing the recorded videos. My mother, Eleanor, gasped as she watched Hank and Liz. My God, Sarah, she murmured, shaking her head. Timothy's face was a mask of fury. That bastard, this will not stand. We need to make sure he faces the consequences, I said firmly. I want a divorce, and I want him to suffer for what he did, Timothy nodded. We have contacts. We'll make sure he doesn't come out of this unscathed. But are you sure this is the route you want to take? I'm more than sure, I said, feeling the weight of their support bolster me. The next morning, armed with my parents and Dana, I returned home. Hank was there, sitting in the living room, pale and apprehensive. Sarah, he started, but I cut him off. We need to talk, I said, setting the phone recording on the coffee table. As the video continued to play, Hank's eyes widened. He turned a shade paler. This isn't necessary, he tried, but his voice faltered. How long has this been going on, Hank? I demanded, voice cracking under the weight of emotion. While I'm out working to build our future, you're here doing this? Hank tried to fumble for excuses, but his words dissolved into stammers. 
His father, Robert, who had just arrived in support, looked at him, disgust etched into his features. This is unforgivable, son, Robert said, his voice clipped and cold. Liz walked in, trying to sneak past, but I stopped her with a glare. Liz, you're part of this, too. You don't get to just walk away. Hank finally found his voice, weak and desperate. Sarah, we can work this out. I'll do whatever it takes. You already had your chance, Hank. You chose to break this. Now live with the consequences, I said, my heart hardened by the evidence I'd gathered. As I confronted them, my father contacted the lawyer we'd prepared, John Thompson. He laid out the groundwork for what would come next. Legal battles, financial retribution, public shaming. Hank's life, as he knew it, was about to unravel. Sarah, please, Hank begged, his voice breaking. I made a mistake. Give me another chance. I shook my head, the weight of my resolve pressing down. No more chances. You've lost everything that mattered. John handed me the final papers. This will ensure you get what you deserve, Sarah, and he will face the justice he tried to escape. Hank looked defeated, his pleas falling silent. Liz, terrified of the repercussions, realized the gravity of her actions. And as I walked out of that house, the burden of betrayal lifted, replaced by the clarity of my decision. Justice wouldn't be swift, but it would be thorough. Hank and Liz had chosen their path, and now they'd face the consequences. I was ready to see it through, resolute and unyielding. The following weeks were a whirlwind. Legal documents, meetings with my lawyer, and difficult conversations became my new routine. Every step I took was deliberate, every move calculated to ensure that Hank and Liz couldn't escape the fallout of their betrayal. One afternoon, Dana and I sat in the lawyer's office going over the final details. John Thompson, a sharp-eyed attorney with a no-nonsense demeanor, laid out the plan with practiced ease. We've documented everything thoroughly. With this evidence, we have a strong case for financial restitution and clear grounds for divorce. Hank's infidelity won't leave room for disputes. He assured me. Good, I replied, my voice steely. I want him to feel every consequence. Thompson gave a nod of agreement, pushing forward a stack of papers. These need your signatures. Once filed, Hank will be notified immediately. So I picked up the pen, the weight of my decision sinking in as I signed each document. Dana sat by my side, her presence a pillar of strength. After the meeting, Dana and I headed to a nearby cafe. As we waited for our drinks, my phone buzzed with a text from Hank. Please, Sarah, we need to talk. I showed Dana the message. He's desperate, she said. But don't forget what he did. I won't, I replied, deleting the message without responding. Two days later, Hank attempted to confront me at my office. I stood firm as he pleaded his case in the parking lot. Sarah, I'm begging you. We can work through this, he implored, his face a mask of desperation. I looked at him, my expression unwavering. You think you can get away with lying and cheating? Watch how I destroy everything you hold dear. Please, Sarah, I'll change. I'll do anything, he continued, his voice cracking. You should have thought about that before you betrayed me. This is your mess, Hank. Live with it. As Hank's world unraveled, so did Liz's. It turned out she was married, too, her husband blindsided by the affair. She reached out to me, but I ignored her attempts at contact. She deserved no sympathy. Within a month, Hank's professional world started to crumble. My documentation and public exposure of his affair tarnished his reputation. Freelancing contracts dried up and clients vanished. He called me repeatedly, but I never picked up. One evening, Robert Hank's father called me. Sarah, I want you to know I support you. My son made his choices. He has to face the ramifications. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it, I said genuinely. Having his support meant a lot. Financially, Hank was sinking. John ensured my safety net was secure while Hank struggled to find stable work. I took control of our joint assets, leaving him scrambling. The public shaming was thorough. Hank's once polished image was now irrevocably smeared. Meanwhile, I began to rebuild. I focused on my career, surrounding myself with supportive friends and family. Each passing day, the weight of betrayal lessened, replaced by a sense of purpose and newfound strength. Dana stood with me every step of the way. One evening, as we sat on my porch with a bottle of wine, she raised her glass. To new beginnings and to you, Sarah, you've come a long way. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking glasses with her. As I gazed at the night sky, a sense of closure settled in. Hank and Liz had tried to break me, but I emerged stronger, 
ready for a future that was now entirely my own. The legal battles finally concluded, and stepping out of the courthouse felt like shedding a heavy layer of skin. The divorce was finalized, assets were divided, and the truth was irrevocably documented. Dana and I met at our favorite cafe once more, where it all began. So, she said, stirring her coffee, how does it feel to be free? I took a deep breath. It feels liberating, but also a little scary. She squeezed my hand. You're going to do great. Time to focus on you. As the days passed, Hank's attempts to contact me dwindled. He called, left messages, even sent letters, but I remained resolute. One afternoon, as I was sorting through some old photos, my phone buzzed with an incoming call. Hello? I answered without checking. Sarah, it's Hank. Please don't hang up, I sighed. What do you want, Hank? I just... I'm sorry. Truly, I've lost everything. And you think I should care? He paused, the silence stretching. I know I don't deserve forgiveness, but I'm begging for a chance to make things right. I felt a pang of pity, but quickly pushed it aside. You're too late, Hank. This is the bed you made. Now lie in it. I hung up, blocking his number. No more interruptions from the past. With Hank out of my life, I focused on building a new one. My career flourished thanks in part to the intense drive that the betrayal had ignited. I took on new projects, connected with more clients, and even got a promotion at work. One evening, Dana and I decided it was time for a celebratory getaway. We booked a trip to a cozy cabin in the mountains. Just you, me, and some wine, Dana declared as we packed our bags. The mountains were stunning, the air crisp and fresh. For the first time in months, I felt a sense of peace. As we sat by the fireplace one night, Dana raised her glass to us, to new beginnings and leaving the past behind. To new beginnings, I echoed, feeling the warmth of the fire and the comfort of true friendship. Back home, my parents continued to be a rock for me. Timothy and Eleanor welcomed me with open arms every time I visited them. We talked about everything and nothing, reminiscing about happier times and looking forward to brighter days. At work, colleagues noticed the change in me. You've been killing it lately, Sarah, my boss remarked during a meeting. Keep it up. I nodded, feeling a newfound confidence. Thanks, I plan to. I wasn't actively seeking a new relationship, but I started being open to the idea. If someone worthy came along, I'd be ready. One evening, after a particularly rewarding day at work, I sat on my porch, the sky painted in hues of orange and pink. I realized I didn't need revenge anymore. I had my life back, and I had rebuilt it stronger than before. Dana joined me, handing me a glass of wine. To good riddance, and to deserving the best, she said, clinking her glass against mine. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I agreed. I deserve someone who brings out the best in me, not the worst. And with that, we toasted to the future, ready for whatever came next.